Okay guys, so I wanted to show you how to uh, put the elevator servos in, but to do that I wanted to point a few things out first on one that I've already completed. You can see that the servo is going to slide into the stab as you see here. Uh, you want to make sure this wire comes back out. There's actually a notch towards the front of the leading edge for this wire because it comes out of the bottom of the servo, so there's a notch so this can come out freely. Um, you're going to want to pre-drill and you're going to need a pretty long um, what I used was actually a little finger drill that you just twist with your finger so you can reach in there like a pencil. Um, and then I used a really long adapter with the drill bits on there so I could reach in there really easily. Um, now another thing, as we talked about before, what you want is when this elevator is level, you want this arm to be perpendicular to the cord of the stab. So you can see right now that's, that's right about 90 degrees to the cord uh, and the elevator is level. So this dimension from this point to this point ended up being right about 85 millimeters. So you want to set this push rod when you create your, your length to 85 millimeters from circle to circle. So this is exactly what we want to do and I'll back up and kind of show you with the, the next elevator exactly how we do that. Just as in the example you saw a moment ago, we're going to assemble this elevator the same way. So a uh, quick tip, you may want to center your servo inside the stab uh, before you actually mount it in there. The reason is that it's going to be hard to move this arm all the way both directions to know if you're at end points or not. So it's going to be harder to center it when it's already mounted. So do that first. Um, another quick pointer is that getting this arm in there was a little bit difficult just by a hair so I just sanded off right in the center here a little bit with a Dremel just so I can kind of pop this in there and place it down like that it was just a little too tight you can't even see what I did so I barely took off any probably a millimeter or two off of there uh, and then one last point is that you'll see when I move this all the way back when we when we end up setting up this this servo it's gonna just bind before it gets all the way down because of this wood right here. So we'll probably end up filing that back just probably an eighth of an inch, not much, and that's gonna be perfectly fine to do. Um, another point in that regard is that if you do go with these carbon fiber arms, they're a little bit thicker towards the tip, so these are gonna hit even sooner. So the ideal uh, thing to do with that is to, to kind of file this off, round it off just a bit, and this will still maintain a lot of integrity if you just kind of round that off an eighth inch or so, and then maybe file that off an eighth inch or so and split the difference, and then you'll get full travel with, with this arm as well. Um, and then I just real quickly before I, I continue, I want to point out the fiberglass, the phenolic material that we have at the end of our, our stabs here. It's very rigid. It adds a lot of strength so your stabs don't flex and move and, and you don't crush this wood every time you bolt them down. Uh, and then also, I didn't point this out when we were hinging, but we've got double points on our ailerons and on our elevators. We've got two hinges at the ends of each of those surfaces. So that's a really nice feature as well that you find in Red Wing planes. So I'm going to go ahead and mount this centered. I already centered my servo arm so I know I'm pretty close. But again, I'm not going to tighten this down all the way until um, we turn on the radio and test everything. There's just no point because we're probably going to have to make some manual adjustments. But it's going to be close for now that it's not going to you know, jerk and, and end up uh, backing out into the, the elevator or something. Um, we're going to go ahead and mount this uh, ball link onto the arm. And these, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but these turnbuckles are um, two-way turnbuckles. So what you need to do, actually I'm just going to grab this, is just kind of spin it on there. And if it starts going on, turning right, then, then it's fine. If it doesn't, you need to turn it left to, t to actually tighten it. So what I like to do, a little quick cheat here, if you get this chuck open just enough, you can kind of grab that, that head and uh, just do a quick tightening by doing that. And then uh, I'm going to throw it in reverse because this is already snugged up. The reverse is going to want to kind of drive into the next one, at least to start. It'll, it'll go pretty easily. But then uh, you'll, you'll see this back and back off. So you're going to have to grab 
So now that it's, it's coming back out on this end, I have to grab this center point, this, this hex tab, and uh, turn right here. And then I could see if it'll, yeah, it keeps wanting to back off. So, so I'm gonna have to go ahead at this point and uh, manually tighten this end up a little bit more just using pliers or um, a wrench or whatever you got handy. Um, as mentioned before, you want to end up uh, setting this to 85 millimeters from point to point so that this is perpendicular um, when the surface is level and flat. You can see here I popped the ball link out. That's actually no big deal. Those pop in and out really easily. Um, I mean, it takes a little bit of pressure, but you can pop that right back in. It features a 40 inch wingspan and an airfoil wing for a superior outdoor performance in light to moderate wind. The electronics package is plenty of power.